Hey, Tara here, and I just wanted to take a few minutes here just to touch base with you. And today I want to talk about setting boundaries with yourself and solid time management. And um, if you're returning, um, we welcome you. I thank you for your support. If you're brand new watching, I just want to say thank you. I know that I uh, am not going live at our normal time. I had some things change in my day. And being a mom of three kids, um, you know, sometimes things change and schedules change. So uh, it was a perfect time to bring up setting boundaries with yourself and your time management. And I saw my friends. Uh, feed this morning a little saying that if you're depleted then you can't give back and it's just so true it really hones into the truth and I don't want to make this very long but I'm gonna to get to the point here um, you know sometimes as bums or as co-workers as bosses and marriage you know sometimes we wear so many hats that we begin to resent what we don't have at times and um, that leads to a sinful nature that leads to a lot of problems and that um, feeds into always feeling as though you don't have enough time to take care of the things that you would really like to see get accomplished and um, and then so you can just feel that you failed and you feel that what you you know sought out to do and that kind of thing and so you know and that can all be prevented um, it's really simple and I'm gonna share this with you here but I want to encourage you that rather than going into that negative thought pattern or that negative attitude or um, feeling as though you don't always have enough okay that really that's not only pride but that um, can lead to not having enough, you know, what you sow, you reap, right? And so if you don't want to reap the consequence of that, you know, um, being preventative is and being proactive is truly prob probably in your best interest to do. So um, here's what I encourage, you know, um, take a look at your schedule, okay? If you have it in front of you, pull out your calendar or grab a... Um, pen and, and a piece of paper and um, I really want you to write down okay the areas of your time that are maybe taking too much of your time okay um, I want you to take a look at the areas of your schedule that could be delegated for example um, do you have children okay and what ages are they? You know, are you really, and be truthful, are you really having your children do chores? Okay, when they come home from school or um, if they're smaller, they're not quite school age, um, what's something that you can instill and teach your child? I want you to take kind of a different spin and perspective on this because not everything should be on you or has to be on you, right? Like certain things, like if you have a business or you have, um, you know, a company that you run, that might be a little bit different in some of the things that you oversee that need to be oversought by you. Um, but let's talk about the areas that you can do something with, okay? You can delegate at work where need be. It's kind of the similar process, okay? Who do you have a board on your team that you can delegate some tasks to, okay, that can help you or you can train them. It may take more work initially, but long term, you're going to set yourself up in a position that um, you're not sacrificing. I was just talking to um, somebody this weekend. Um, I was making a community connection uh, in a salon and she was telling me, yeah, I'm sacrificing all these hours now so that later I can have a life. And I just really felt for her because she has two businesses and she hasn't been home and her kids are, she has four kids under the age of four. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, I could so help her in this area, you know. Um, but, you know, she could really be delegating where she needs to delegate, right? You know, and so she can train and equip people to do some of the things that she does that may require more hours out of her initially. But in the future, that's actually saving her time and money, especially if she has an employee that she really appreciates that can really help her with those things, okay? Okay. Now with your children, you can be having them do something different, you know, for you that's inside of your household. So even if they're really small, you can give them a rag and show them how to dust off the tables, 
okay? And maybe you could show them the tables around the house that they can be dusting, right? Or a shelf or something along those lines, okay? Um, you could be showing another one of your children how to put the laundry in the wash. You may have to help them start it and teach them how to do that, but that's something that they can do, okay? Maybe they go through the different rooms and they collect the laundry, right? Maybe you can give them a broom and show them how to sweep the dirt into, um, you know, uh, the broom and so on and so forth and, and pick up the house, okay? Maybe it's just a matter of they pick up their toys, right? But it seems silly because there's all these small things, okay? But these small things are things that because your household had turned into a cyclone with children or because, you know, you weren't home as much, you may not have as much availability in your schedule, but yet you feel like you're spending so much more time doing all of these things, right? You know, and so you're like, gosh, where's my time going? It keeps getting sucked out. Well, now if you have children and you're delegating some of these things to them, you know, these small little tasks, they really add up, right? Because it saves you that much more time and you're teaching your children how to value time, okay? Basically, essentially, if they, you know, change their clothes or they have toys that are on the floor, you're now teaching them that they have a duty and responsibility to pick that up and later down the line, you know, when they're on their own, they're gonna have to know how to do the laundry and pay their bills and do all these valuable tasks on their own. And think about what you're teaching your child at a really young age. Instead of watching your children watch you burn out every time, or that you get upset and frustrated, they see, oh, I help my mom, you know, we help each other and it's a better outcome and mom's not stressed or burnt out, right? And so it teaches them the value of responsibility and it teaches them, it takes the responsibility, you know, yes, you still have an obligation to teach them, but it takes all that pressure off of you, you know, and then you don't feel so burnt out like, why is this a mess again? I just cleaned up this room about 20 minutes ago to, um, gosh, that's awesome. I just taught my kids how to pick up their toys when they were done. You might have to remind them, but at least they're learning how to do it. You know, it's going to take some time to do, but it takes that pressure off of you. I mean, you're not the one bending down, picking everything up or cleaning up after them each and every time, you know? Um, and at the same time, I also encourage you to look at your schedule and take time for yourself. Like when is the last time you took a walk down the street for about five or 10 minutes? Or when's the last time you took the hot soak or did something really nice for you? And how often do you do it? Because some people are like, yeah, I do that like once a week. Well, no, really, you need to be scheduling 15 to 20 minutes out of your day because if you're depleted, you can't pour into anyone, not your spouse, not your kids, not anything that you're committed to. So you need to really refuel and take care of you, even if that's locking yourself in the bathroom for 10 minutes to read some scripture so you, you can wrap your mind around what's going on. You can refocus. You can rejuvenate and get a little bit refreshed so that that way you have something to go off of, Okay. And if you're really struggling, don't hesitate to call a friend and ask them for prayer. I know, myself included, we don't like to look bad, right? You know, and we don't want to admit that we're vulnerable and that we need something. So why would we ask for help? Well, we have to let go of pride and say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm having a really hard time. I don't expect you to fix everything, but I do need some prayer. I do need somebody in my corner to help back me up. You know, would you be willing to just pray for me about the situation? You don't even have to tell them about the situation, right? Just simply asking, you know, hey, this is going on with my kid. I'm feeling a little bit emotional. Can you just uplift, you know, us in prayer right now? Or I need some strength. Can you pray for strength? Or, you know, whatever it is that you really need, because friendships should be built off of the safety of knowing that you can share something with that person that may be a little bit more intimate that we wouldn't tell the average Joe on the street that um, is going to remain a safe place and they are going to genuinely be there to encourage us and pray for us. And who knows, they may have an encouraging word that, you know, we really need it, but because we're not being vulnerable, we're not asking for help. Okay, so some, sometimes it is necessary to ask for help or sometimes we just need to walk away and take a time out. But Another way that I encourage you to, to rest and to take some of these pressures off of you is to also schedule rest for earlier, 
You know, there's all kinds of studies that are proving that, you know, when we go to sleep sooner, that, um, you know, it's much healthier for our brain and it's actually healthier for our heart. Okay. And if you really, I mean, if you think about it, stress and anxiety, that puts a lot of pressure on the heart and the brain. Okay. And it's why we get kind of foggy or clustered and we can't think things through. Then when we have enough rest and we can say, oh, yeah, okay. So I encourage you, rather than keeping everything up here where it can get jumbled, you know, making making a list. It could be as simple as, um, you know, taking the, t so in order to get better sleep, okay, um, taking that list and prioritizing it with what's important, what's the most important and critical to down to, yeah, this is still important, but it could really wait till tomorrow. And then take like those two or three things on your list and start working on them until they're at their full completion. And if you can't do that, okay, maybe something takes longer than what you have in the day. Just set little, um, I wouldn't say deadlines, but goals for yourself with that task. You know, maybe you work on it for an hour every day until it's complete. Or you work on it, um, like for example, I'm writing my book right now. You know, my time to write would be on a Friday night when I have eight hours away from the kids, okay? So that's when I tend to work on that task, right? And I do, I know I'm committed to that every Friday night until I see the completion of the book into editing phases, okay? So when you have projects like that, set little times aside, or if you're planning a vacation, set time aside each week to work on that, okay? It doesn't have to be long, it could just be an hour that you know you and your spouse are connecting and you're, you're planning, you know, you're taking time. So then that way you're not like, oh my gosh, I still have this to do, and I have that to do, and I have this to do, and I have that to do. And pretty soon you're just really overwhelmed with all these tasks that you need to do. And, oh my gosh, I'm just so frustrated and stressed. And you really didn't need to be. You know, that's the thing. So take the pressure off of yourself to perform and um, just set, you know, take all this that's up here and, and what's here and get it out. Put it on paper so you can see it. OK, and that may help you to, you know, maybe delegate to your spouse or delegate to your children. Some of you have children that are too little to do tasks quite yet. But those of you that have children that I would say are two or three and above, they could be doing little things. You're you're grooming the next generation for success. So what you teach them now, it really does matter and count. And it takes that pressure off of you. Hey, Mignon, it's really good to see you. Yeah, so, you know, you just really want to make sure that you, you're taking care of yourself in the process. You know, sometimes things do become compiled and so overwhelming that you do need to set them aside. And maybe some days you just need to be thankful that, um, okay, I have clean clothes to wear. I was able to take a shower and... I was able to feed myself <laughs> and maybe for that day that's a huge accomplishment so give yourself grace don't just be like shoot I didn't get those two to three tasks that Tara said to write down and oh crap you know don't think like that okay don't set yourself up to fail you know in other words all right you don't have to set yourself up to fail you can set yourself up for success but give yourself grace and mercy if your kids are under the weather or you're under the weather and everything didn't get done, it's okay. Spend that time snuggling your children and loving on them. Spend that time taking an extra nap. Your body probably needed it, okay, so that you could function. So sometimes you have to take a step back to take a step forward again. But know what your limitations are. Set those boundaries. Don't you dare stay up for that extra two hours because you didn't get those other five things done, okay? Lay them aside. They can be done tomorrow. Instead, set a good routine for yourself. Set yourself up for success. Set yourself up to think more clearly. Set yourself up to, you know, really do the things that are on your heart to do. And I'm not saying don't do those things. I'm just saying set time aside to do those things. You know, work them into your schedule. Don't let your schedule rule you. You tell your time where it needs to go. And it is easier said than done, okay? But when you notice that, okay, I'm planning for the trip and I'm planning it for 5 to 6 p.m. on a Tuesday evening, okay? When it gets past that 5 to 6 window, don't keep working on the trip. If your next task is to get dinner on the table, get dinner on the table. If you need to meal plan or, you know, make something the night before so you can have dinner on time, do that. Okay, because you don't want to be up an extra hour. That means that you're up an extra hour before bedtime. You know, don't do that to yourself. You know, 
you deserve time to relax and to rejuvenate and to unwind and to enjoy life. Life was not given to you as a task. It is not a business transaction, okay? You need to be the best you possible. So you were designed to also enjoy life. Life is a gift. It's not something to be taken advantage of. So just really take your time out to enjoy the small things. Don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to go relax. Don't forget to take your 15 to 20 minutes and maybe you take that a couple of times a day so that you can breathe and instead of yelling at your kids, you've thought everything through and you can approach the situation more gently okay in a way that's more effective we have to think about how we're coming off in our businesses we have to think about how we're coming off to our spouse we need to think about how we're coming off to our children because we can be that change we can be a positive influence and a positive change and do things so much more effectively if we think here first and we think here second before we think here first that was for somebody. I really believe that was for somebody. You know, we need to, we need reminders. We need to hear because, you know, we, we tend to snap, right? We don't get enough sleep. So we're snap, 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 snap. And all of a sudden it becomes this, 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 this. That looks like anger. You know, that's not even, that's not even healthy. That's not healthy for anybody, you know? So we need to take a minute to say, okay, this is getting out of control. My day's becoming overwhelming. That moment that you feel overwhelmed, that's when you need to nip it in the bud. Don't let it keep getting overwhelming that's doing this in your head. If you have a tornado going on, you need to stop, okay? And you need to get yourself in check, okay? Because you're supposed to be enjoying life. Your kids should not see a stressed out mom. Your business partner shouldn't see a stressed out business partner, okay? You know, your spouse shouldn't see somebody, you know, their best friend being stressed out. They don't like that then that puts pressure on them to try to be there for you, which they want to be, but they shouldn't be so stressed out doing that. You know, they should be in a place that they can enjoy that time with you because you never know how much time you have. That's the point. You never know, right? So you should be living your life to its fullest. You should be enjoying what you do. If you don't enjoy your business and you don't enjoy the company that you work with and you don't enjoy your spouse and you don't enjoy your kids and you can't stand you, something's wrong. Okay, so you've got to be able to take a step back and say, okay, Lord, what is it that I need to hear that I need to take a look at that just needs a tweak? We need to redefine how, how it is that I'm doing my day because this isn't working for me. I'm not the best mom or spouse or business partner or coworker or friend that I could be and I want to learn how. Humble yourself. Be a little bit vulnerable because let me tell you, people like to know that they can relate to you. They like to know that you're real. They don't want to see that you think you're on some platform. Because let me tell you, social media makes everybody's life look perfect all the time. It's not perfect all the time. Okay? I had all three kids home today. Talk about overwhelm, right? I'm speaking to something that hit home for me. I had to really step back earlier. You know? And I'm just like, okay. And I needed the extra sleep. But I was thankful. Heck, I was thankful my kids slept in extra today. You know? You know, and it's, there's just days like that, that I had to remind myself, it's better to be there for my kids. I'm in a season of being a mom. I'm supposed to be enjoying my kids. Let me enjoy my kids, put these things to the side. They have their space and place and time. But at the same time, you know, um, I can get these things done. Let me just look at my schedule and let me see where something can go tomorrow. Let me see where something could go Wednesday and Thursday so I'm not getting overwhelmed and I'm still hitting my goals and I still get things done, but it's not at my own expense. In other words, I'm not in the way of myself, you know, and that's really important because it, it can happen that way. We could get some momentum in our business like that. And then next thing we know, other areas are getting neglected. No, we shouldn't be neglecting other areas. We should be sowing seeds in all areas, okay? We should always be looking at, you know, how can we put our best efforts, not just our intentions, but how can we apply those intentions to make them an effort so that that way we're present in every area? Well, it starts by taking this, putting it on paper. It starts by getting more sleep at night. It starts by the things that we eat. It starts by how we um, how we treat ourselves because how we treat ourselves is, is a direct reflection of how we treat other people. 
how we treat ourselves is how we treat our spouse. How we treat ourselves is how we parent. How we treat ourselves is how we come off in business. If we're not seeing fruit in an area, it is time to go back and revisit that. It's time to take a look at how our time is spent with things. And if they are not serving you, if they are not serving you, please, please know my heart. If they are not serving you, you need to let them go. Let them go. You know, like Frozen, the song, Let It Go? Yeah, we need to let it go. If you need to listen to that song so you can let it go, do it. You know, let things go. It, it doesn't have to be, your life doesn't have to be a negative process. Your life can be fun. But you need to find what it is that you love and that you're passionate about. Some of you are just like burnt out with emotions of doing life. Is your life really a routine? And if it is, what happened to the fun? Well, I, I can't remember, Tara. I don't remember what fun looks like. Well, take some time out. Maybe that's what you need to do. You need to vision cast. Okay, you need to look at the things that you, you used to have fun with and start implementing them into your week. Maybe that could be your 20 to 30 minute thing that you do for yourself. Maybe you like to paint and you haven't done it in a while. Or maybe, you know, you like horseback riding and you haven't scheduled a lesson in a few months and you forgot about how good you felt after you were on the horse. Okay? Whatever that looks like, start doing things you enjoy again. When you start living and you start smiling again, your spouse is happier, your kids are happier, your business is doing better, your relationships with your coworkers is better, you're getting more done and you're way more effective. So start looking at your time again and seeing how you can better take care of you so that you can be better in all of those areas, that you can be a better version of you, not just for yourself. Yes, you do owe that to yourself, but so you can really serve other people effectively the way that the Lord has purposed you to serve people. Okay, don't go at it from a burnout perspective, okay? Take care of you. You know, you don't want the oil running dry. You know how it says in scripture, you don't want the oil to run out. So if you don't want your oil to run out, find ways to refuel yourself with oil. So that that way you can stay in, in alignment. You can stay attuned to what other people need. Why? Because you're, you're there, you're present. You're not just hanging on the phone line with somebody and thinking about all the things that you need to do. We're all guilty of it, okay? Instead of talking to your children, but you're thinking about those other things, no, you're, you're present. Why? Because you know that you committed to a time, and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to fall flat sometimes, okay? But it's what you do with when you trip, how you get back up and in presence again. Not the game. You want to be present, Okay, your life is a present. It's a gift. You should be present for it. The Lord wants to give you life and life abundant. So have him show you what areas need correction now. Nip it in the bud now. When you realize it's an issue, nip it in the bud now so that you can be the best version of you, not only to yourself, but to others. It really is time to start living and enjoying life rather than your life being a chore. I hope that this really helped you and spoke to some of you. I would love to partner with you and pray for you. And if there's anything that I can do for you, um, I do do some coaching in these areas. I'm, you know, I'm happy to help you, give you a free consult, you know, whatever that looks like. If you're struggling with something, um, please be vulnerable and come, you know, tell me I'm a safe place. I'll definitely, you know, pray with you, whatever that looks like, partner with you in some way. Um, if you're looking at starting a business or you're looking at, um, you know, getting control just over your time in general. I mean, whatever that looks like, however I can serve you, please do not hesitate to reach out to me because I do really want to help you. My heart is to help you. If you know of somebody that's really struggling with their time, um, time management is something that I actually teach people. I just gave you a few tidbits. Don't give all my secrets away, right? You know, but um, I'm, I'm happy to connect with you. I'd love to do that with you. So please uh, don't hesitate. If, if time management is a huge struggle for you, you are who I want to connect with. So um, definitely reach out to me or if you want prayer, reach out to me too. Um, you can always, I guess if we're connected on Facebook, you can always do it that way. Um, I do check my others folder, whether we're friends or not. So if you felt that this was beneficial, by the way, share it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind you sharing. I want to get the word out, especially if it helps someone. So feel free to, to share that word. 
Um, and then if you have somebody that you would like to refer, connect me with, you know, you can always reach out to me in Messenger um, here on Facebook. And I'll leave my information in the comments section too so that if you prefer to be a little bit more discreet about it, you can always send me an email. I'll leave that um, in the comments below this video along with my website address. So you can just click on that and then fill out your name and your email address and then fill out application. And it'll look like you're filling out an application, but you're not. It's just a means of getting in my schedule so that we could schedule a time that we can uh, more intimately just to two, two and two, you know, one, one on one um, connect and I can pray with you or I can see an agreement with you or if you just need to talk and let something out or if you need to connect more, you know, with your time and figure it out, and you're having some trouble with that and knowing what that looks like, then we can connect that way. You know, um, so either of those three is good. So Facebook, um, email, or clicking on my website would be perfect. It's just been a real honor and pleasure being here with you tonight. I do need to get going. Speaking of time, um, I do need to get with a client. But it was really good being here with you. Thank you so much for honoring me and, and being a part of my life. Thank you for sharing in today's life. It's such an honor to be present with you. It's such an honor to connect with you. And please let me know how I can connect with you today in the up and coming weeks. And uh, I'm also going to be coming live um, tomorrow. I am going to try to keep that more at uh, the 2 to 3 window range Eastern Standard Time. Um, but if that doesn't work, you know, I'll let you know. Uh, time will be announced tomorrow. So just kind of stay tuned. Oh, you're so welcome, Holly. And you kind of came on later. So, um, yeah, those of you that jumped on, I, I know some of you are watching real intently right now. Um, and I love it. It's, it's awesome because it's an area that I always have to work on and humble myself as a mom. So it's just really awesome when we can share in that moment together because I it, it tells me that I'm not the only one. So it takes the pressure off of me, you know, it actually helps me out. It's healing for me to be here with you. I hope you know that. It's really healing, you know, and I and I hope that it helps you in some way too. Um, but yeah, just stay tuned to what our Facebook Lives look like. And um, don't forget to go back, you guys, and catch the replay for some of you that are just now jumping on. Uh, I want to make sure that you have that information. You know, I want to make sure that you're able to get the full um, abundance of this message today. It's been a real honor. Thank you so much again for joining and uh, go back, catch the replay. Let me know if I can partner with you or pray with you and I will catch you tomorrow. All right. Have a great rest of your night and be blessed. Bye for now.